tonight. Let me give you an idea of what these mean uh, all together. So for those of uh, the politicians who have gone to the field to campaign and to seek for votes, uh, this is what the law did say about how much you can spend in terms of campaign. This is the cap. So when there is a one week of extension, if INEC opens up the campaign um, uh, uh, deadline, what does it mean? Can they spend money on these? Because they probably had expected the election to get on to, uh, to end on Saturday. But because the election is going to be extended by one week, this is what the laws they say. Ladi Ijoma, the presidential campaign cannot be more than one billion naira. Governorship campaigns cannot be more than 200 million naira. Senatorial seat uh, contests cannot be more than 40 million naira per candidate. House of Representatives, two or 20 million. And the state assembly elections, 10 million naira. That is what the Electoral Act, uh, as amended, did provide, guys. What do you make of it? <laughs> so, my, well, my first question, you know, when we asked last week um, how far INEC had gone monitoring election spending, because they had said they would monitor what each party was, was going to spend. You know, there was a bit of a chuckle and then a bit of an explanation, but there was no figure. And so we don't really know how much they've spent fa so far. So even if it is extended, we don't know again how much um, that would be. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's as puzzling as it is. It's difficult, it's difficult to say. Oh, uh, uh, has actually hit the nub. It's very difficult. So if you don't know how much has been spent, then you don't know how much window they have left. And therefore, you wouldn't know if they've exceeded that exactly. window by now. Mm -hmm. If the campaigns are reopened between now and uh, Thursday? Thursday, that's another four days, depending on what they want to do, they may, of course, not spend as much as they have spent in the preceding period, which was much longer anyway. Mm -hmm. And because they are fully aware of the uh, four days that it is that is left, and they will be wary this time, of course, that there are other elections still to come. So you, don't, you can't be sure. And don't forget, Shil, in previous conversations, some of our guests had said that even these caps that you're making reference to that are in the law now are completely unrealistic. That because if you start even from expression of interest forms to how much was spent in the process of becoming even the candidate, not to talk about the elections, this was not, uh, this was not it. So again, it would be... It will be difficult for anyone to say that, oh, yeah, I mean, we are within this limit. And then there's friends of the candidate mm -hmm. who spend mm -hmm. far more than the candidate does uh, on uh, these expenses. Yeah. I do agree with you, Ladi, because these figures right here, one billion naira, 200 million naira for governorship. Uh, look at a whole lot of issues that is happening. We'll take a moment on the program. But when we come back, there is so much more to show you on this side of the divide. And we will be talking to INEC. Whether or not they have the news for us, and that's when we come back, everyone. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, here, right here, where we're showing through some of the darkness uh, that have hovered over this process uh, to give you insight and illuminate your mind on some of the issues right here. So what does this mean when INEX says election will not happen on the slated date and rescheduled for one week? Could it mean that uh, people uh, who have traveled, for example, to their villages or so, m some people who have moved to another location, uh, what could this mean for voter turnout? So we wanted to share with you some of the voter turnout that we've seen over the last year. In fact, we'll go at back, as far back as 1999, 20 years ago, when we entered into the Fourth Republic, uh, we had 52% of voter turnout. That year, a, a year after 2003, we had 69% of voter turnout. Uh, that's uh, way higher, and uh, it looks so much that things should get up and go higher, but no, we slumped by 57%. We went uh, some um, almost 10% uh, lower than what we saw in 2003, 2007, 57%, and in 2011. 53%, it's even got worse. People were not coming out to vote. And that's the year where a lot of people use their temporary voter card. But here in 2015, it became so poor. 
in fact, the poorest that we've seen in the history, uh, over 20 years' history of Nigeria's uh, election, talking about voter turnout. Ladi Ijoma, make sense of this for me, because I know Ladi especially have been voting for a long time, and uh, you understand what it means when voter and, uh, voters are not coming out. The fourth, second, third republic, up to the fourth republic, the highest we've seen so far is this year, 2003. How long Ladi has been voting. Looking at the figures that you have there, that was even when PVC collection was not an issue. So when you look at um, 2003, as you have 1999, um, 2007, you found that PVC collection was not an issue. But even looking at that figure now for 2015, my worry is what's going to happen on Saturday with the rate of PVC collection that we've seen now in terms of making sense of the figures? Absolutely. So we need good, to also good ask Ayanek. Ladi, your now, now, Well, again, yeah, I've been voting for quite a long time, but the, 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 the point to be made really is that we have been, more people found it easier to vote back then, 1999, 2003, 2007, even 2011, they found it easier to vote. But as each of them pointed out, there's the issue of this PVC's collection. Then, of course, some of the figures that you have will either go up or will come down because we still have not been given the final figures after that three or four day extension happened the week before the last week for the elections before they were then postponed. We haven't gotten the figures of the increase in the number and how many are left over. So we really do not know if come tw this 2019 there will be either the figure going up or yeah, the figure going, going down. down. But Joe, I don't know, isn't that a case of each state should just turn out what figure they have. And then you collate it. Or are the statistics as tough as, you know, as that? You know why I'm just trying to keep calm? Because we have the INEC guy who is going to be talking mm -hmm. to us here. Yeah. He's our friend in the house, Oluwale Osazuzi. He will be joining us on the program to give yeah. us some of the latest that's happening from INEC point of view. I have a lot of questions on my mind to ask him. But let's take a look at one more thing here. So what I try to do is to break down that 2015, don't forget, uh, is, was a poor outing for the nation in terms of voter turnout and that has affected our election in so many ways so a lot of the state governorship election those one that, uh, those ones that were staggered we have we have 40 something in fact in some states we had less than 40 percent voter turnout so it's been bad since that time so uh, if you look at it in, from the south south region where we have perhaps the highest this is the region that gave us perhaps the highest voter turnout in 2015. And the Southwest right here gave us the lowest voter turnout in 2015. So, and uh, followed by Northwest, 55% of voters came out uh, for, to vote. Northeast followed, North Central, 43%, and Southeast, 40%. So, Southwest gave us 40.26%. Uh, 40, uh, when the South South was the highest in 2015. What are we going to see this time around? Is it going to be higher? But if you look at what we may not be able to go into tonight, how many people have been able to register from 2015 to 2018? That's another story for another day to tell you in these regions how people have been able to register and whether or not that will affect how they come out to vote in the next one week.